Hello everybody, Mike, aka the Magico 13 here with episode 6 of my moderately buttered KSP Let's Play. Yes, you heard that right, episode 6, the one mentioned in the last video where I said it would be out pretty soon. A um, month and a half later and I'm finally getting around to it. Uh, I had all the video, well I had the first half of the video recorded and edited and yeah, uh, so what I'm trying to do here is um, I'm trying to put up a new satellite, a uh, larger one for interstellar stuff. Um, not interstellar, interplanetary uh, purposes. Um, and it doesn't really seem to be going too well. Um, the purpose of this satellite is also to fill the gap that was left um, when we had a failed deployment of satellite number two in the last video, which uh, we will later in this video be attempting to rescue. But yes, uh, this first launch of this new satellite is not going well at all, and it is rapidly approaching the launch pad. So uh, no dice there. So we try it again. Uh, this time I think I've changed up some of the satellite, or not the uh, satellites, some of the, uh, well, satellite dishes, I suppose. Um, I've changed up some of those. I believe, no, I had the fins last time. I think I'm also just taking this one a little more carefully. Uh, let's see how this one goes. Yes, so uh, you may be wondering why it's been so long since my last episode. Well, as many of you are probably aware, school started. Yes, I'm a senior in college, and uh, between the last episode and this episode, school has started, and I thought it was going to be a relatively light semester, but it's actually ended up being one of my worst semesters yet in terms of schoolwork. Uh, but yes, this uh, this is not going very well either. I believe the center stack just exploded, if I remember correctly. I was not actually paying attention to the video. Um, so yes, we are still rising, but not for long. And I had heard that these dishes sometimes act like parachutes, so I figured, why not? And then you can see just there the uh, Kerbal Engineer just died. Um, well, hopefully the uh, engineer himself who designed the ship didn't die. That would be rather unfortunate. But uh, the uh, Kerbal Engineering Redux, for whatever reason, I still have this issue where generally it's associated with the surface tab. Whenever I open or close it, I just get this useless gray bar. But yeah, so now we are slowly gliding back down to Kerbin, and um, I'm not sure why I'm trying to point this retrograde. Oh yes, yes, that makes sense, never mind. Um, pointing it retrograde so that the dish is on top and we will be tail first, but that's not really working. We're a little sideways, just kind of gliding back down. Still picking up speed, we're going 350 meters per second. Turn on the engine, see if I can get this standing up. Figure why not try to land this? The last one definitely couldn't have landed that, how fast I was going, but this one I'm going pretty slow. We could maybe manage it. We're pointed straight up now. We're only going, we're actually slowing down now. I'm not even using the engine. We're only going 340 meters per second now. <laughs> Tried deploying this, and oh no, no. Yes, the wind caught that and ripped it off, and there goes our main dish, and now we're spiraling out of control. Why not open this one? Oh wow, okay. Apparently this one's fine. It's totally okay with being open while the other one just got ripped off. Okay, let's try this one. Phew, nope, that one's gone. And one more. And there goes the whole stack. So we've just got these uh, 
We've got pretty much none of the dishes left, and just these little engines here. Let's see if we can guide this down. Maybe save a couple million credits or whatever currency they use, uh, whatever currency Kerbals use. 60, 50, 40, we're at 200 meters. Yeah, we're fine. We've got plenty of fuel. We're going plenty slow. Just got to bring this down gently, gently, gently. Nope, nope. Now we're going back up. Gently. Five meters per second. Whatever. That's gentle. So, uh, yeah, we've actually managed to land this. Now you can get a good look at it. Now, just imagine there were uh, four more dishes on the sides and a large dish on the top. And then we've got these giant solar panels for power. So yeah, so here's your first um, close-up view of what we're going to be hopefully putting into space. So yeah, so let's try this again. You can see I changed out the top dish, and the reason is that I read on the forums, I guess the flight engineers messed up again, um, I read on the forums that the co-creators of Remote Tech 2 were going to remove the, um, the antenna, well, the satellite dish that I was using before um, in favor of a different one, so in order to still be able to use that satellite, I decided I'd just switch to another dish that wasn't going to be replaced. Um, and this one seems to be working fine. It's a little smaller, it has a shorter range, but it's still, um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's still one of the largest ones. And this flight seems to be going pretty smoothly. Drop our solid rocket boosters, and now we're just on the primary engines. As you can tell, we are using KW rocketry for pretty much all of this. Start our gravity turn. A little late, but it's not too bad, as long as we don't, you know, flip around, which tends to happen. I'm not sure if that's far, um, if that's a result of far, or if that's just the front of the ship being too heavy, or a combination of both. Either way, as long as you take it really slowly, you're fine. Uh, if you try, like I will in stock, um, I'll just pretty much go completely over once you hit like 10,000 meters, and the ship's just fine. It doesn't work so well when you're using mods. Speaking of stock, as you may have noticed, 0 0.22 was just released this past Wednesday, assuming I get this video up by the end of the weekend. Um, and I have not played it yet. I have not seen any actual videos of people playing the full release. I have seen some stuff from experimentals, um, such as the interview that Scott Manley did with one of the lead developers. I believe his name is Philippe. Uh, it goes by the name Harvester. Um, if you haven't seen that yet, it's worth watching. Um, yes, I am going to start a .22 stock career mode. Um, it will all be live commentary. Basically, I just kind of want to play it, and I figured I'd record it. So, yeah. Alright, so now we are going to bring this up to the geosynchronous orbit that we desire. Um, and as you can tell, or as you may be able to tell, we're not actually going to get into that gap. I launched it so that the... well, I suppose the gap is always there. Um, I was hoping I'd be able to just launch and go straight into that gap, but then I forgot that, you know, orbital mechanics. Also, yes, I had all of the dishes, I believe, set up for the, uh, to the landing gear op action group, which, um, doesn't really matter. You can assign anything to anything. Uh, I think you can even assign things to when you stage, just not 
particular stages yet. Uh, they may add that in later. Um, so yes, here we are. I think we're now making that burn out to um, the altitude that we desire. We are now rapidly approaching that, as you can see. I overburned a little bit, so I have a maneuver node set up prior to that. And you can see our uh, path of communication back to Kerbin, because if you haven't noticed already, this is a fully remote mission. There's no Kerbal on this. Now that we have the uh, communication network, we don't need Kerbals in order to do um, planetary missions. We still would need them for interplanetary, but after this dish is up, we might not. So yes, here we go. We've got it in a nice orbit, a orbital period of about six hours. We'll fix that soon. Um, but we still have this trans or not this transfer stage, this lift stage still attached, which I do love KW rocketry, by the way. The 3.5 meter tanks are amazing. So I would like to thank you, um, thank the uh, subscriber that actually suggested I try it out because I am loving it. Um, so yes, so all these orbital periods on these GPS, I've renamed them all to GPS 1 through 4. Um, all the orbital periods are very slightly different. And what that means is as time progresses, these will... Um, have some drift and so some will be closer to each other some will be farther from each other but if we get the same orbital period on all of them even if the orbits aren't perfectly geosynchronous or kerbal kerbin synchronous keo no yeah um even if they aren't perfectly circular orbits at the right altitude as long as their orbital periods are all the same they will stay in the same relative position um there may be some wobbling like visual like if you were looking f at one from the other it might wobble in the sky a little bit um which is something you can actually see on ike um when you're on duna and looking at ike you can see it wobble back and forth between the sky i believe the wiki has um an image of that. But yes, so if we can get them all to the same orbital period, preferably about six hours, since that is the um, length of time for Kerbin, a Kerbin day, then uh, we'll be good. And so yeah, I uh, retracted the solar panel because I saw that it was going to hit the lift stage, but then decided to just run the, uh, the antenna directly into the lift stage. But we're all right. So yes, we get this up to an orbital period of six hours and 26 seconds, which is close enough for me. I don't really feel like turning that around. So now we're gonna go to all the other satellites and this one is has an orbital period that is too high. So what we need to do is actually, and this may seem a little counterintuitive, burn retrograde. Um, yes, we actually need to slow down in order to make our period, so the amount of time that we're traveling, um, be lower. Now, if you're going from point A to point B, like on the Earth, and say you're going from like New York to Los Angeles, you would want to get there, if you want to get there as quickly as possible, you would go as fast as possible. Um, it's a little different in space. While that's still true for point A to point B, that's not necessarily true for orbits. The faster you're going, the larger your orbit, and so you'll actually um, have a larger, longer orbital period if you're going faster. Wow, my, okay. Um, so yes, so I said that I wanted to use KAS to try to rescue one of these, uh, GPS-2 actually, um, the one that I left trapped uh, without any connection. So this is that rescue mission. And as you see, we will try to, I've got a grappling hook um, on the end of a winch and I've just shot it at that and I've caught it now. I just need to bring it close and then lock it in and then we'll be docked. And then I can open the antennas and everything will be great. 
I just, you know, need to get it to actually line up first. So I'll just drag it over here and, yeah, just throw it around until it works. It's a couple million dollars probably. Oh, and um, the grappling hook just fell off. So that's kind of useless. Well, I, I'll let you into a secret. This has actually happened already before. This is the second time I tried it. So now I'm just mad, and I decide I'm just going to try to run this thing into the satellite, because I can't do anything with the satellite. There's no way I can save it. I can't use KAS at all. Um, I believe I've even tried it with the, um, the electromagnetic attachment, the electromagnet, and no luck there. Also, I cannot hit this thing. I am not nearly as precise as I need to be in order to hit this, so... I say, whatever, let's just, we've got enough fuel, why not drop our orbital speed down to zero and just fall back to Kerbin. So I get it as close as possible, and then point straight at Kerbin, use the rest of the fuel, and just glide right in. And I want to make sure this thing stays pointed there, and I accidentally point it sideways, and now you, it's a really weird view seeing all of the uh, textures start loading. But yes, so we have deadly re-entry, so this is probably not going to end very well. Well, not well for it. Well for me. I like explosions. Explosions are fun. This game is wonderful for explosions. Ooh, this video is really messed up on my screen, and I'm not sure if that's the same for you, but it's fine now. Okay, um, so yes, so that didn't work. So we had tried doing stuff with EVA when I first launched it, and there were issues. However, with KAS, I believe it's 3.0, it's still an alpha, um, they add the ability for these containers, and you can take things like antennas and place them on other ships in EVA, which sounds like a godsend for me. So I've got this antenna, and I should just be able to attach it to the ship, right? Attach. No, it didn't attach. Okay. Um, so... I run into this really annoying issue where I can't move. And you might get to see that. Yeah, okay. Uh, I can't actually move because I have an antenna, and I think Remote Tech thinks that since I have an antenna, I must be a ship that's not in contact, and so I'm not allowed to move. So I had to cut a lot of this video, but... Um, I uh, had e infinite EVA fuel on because I was wasting fuel being unable to move and it was really annoying. And I also, I believe if you have infinite EVA fuel on, then you will always have contact um, with remote tech. But, um, so yeah, that was a really annoying bug that actually plagued me for about an hour worth of playing, trying to figure out what was going on. And... Um, I had to cut most of that video just because it was taking too long and I didn't want this to be a super long video. But so I'm going to, I know this has worked, I've done it on Kerbin, so I'm just going to try to get these ships really close so that I don't need to move pretty much at all. And there we go. That is right. That is exactly what I needed to happen. Um, so hopefully now, since it has an antenna on it, it should be able to move. And yes! We can extend the panels, so we couldn't do that before. So the fact that we can extend the panels, just extend everything. We have regained control of this ship, thanks to the Kerbal Attachment System, new version 3.0 Alpha, I think. Something like that, yeah. It's in the uh, description below. Um, so thank you, Kerbal Attachment System. You have just saved the Kerbals millions of dollars in satellite technology that otherwise would have been just rammed into with a uh, winch ship. Yeah. So now I have to return Jeb. And this time I don't take three tries. Um, this time it just works on the first try. Uh, I think I did have a couple arrow break maneuvers, but um, I just have cut those out for now because we don't really need them. Um, yes, I have a probe on this as well, because you can't actually get the uh, stuff out of the container if you don't have a probe, which is another issue with remote tech. Speaking of remote tech, um, 
I started using Remote Tech 2 when it was still very, very much being actively developed. And then immediately after I made the last video, they completely stopped any development on it. So this is the same exact version. I have found a version of Remote Tech 1 that uses the Remote Tech 2 parts. Um, so I may try that out for the next episode. But for now, we are um, using a very crippled, very buggy version of Remote Tech 2. Um, but yeah, so it, it still works though. And now we are going to try to land Jeb on land, because um, as we all know, and if you don't already, well now you do, um, landing in water in Kerbal Space Program is substantially more dangerous than landing on land. And it's kind of counterintuitive, but this game has a lot of weird quirks like that. But it does look like we're just going to be able to land right on the shores of this, and hopefully we don't roll down into the water. Oh, we're rolling. But we're, we're okay. I have a... Um, I learned from the last time to have power generation on your ship. So now Jeb's going to run down into the water. Uh, into the water. He appears to be just running on about, you know, a foot below the water. And he's still running. I think Jebediah may be the Jesus of the Kerbals. I'm sorry if that was uh, religiously insensitive somehow, but he was just walking on water. And now he's kind of floating a little above it. His arms are just kind of there, and he's definitely not kicking with his feet. But, uh, yeah. He can uh, apparently walk on water. And so now I figured it'd be kind of nice to see a sunrise in the background. But yes. So now we're going to rename this satellite. Um, to the new ground station. This is the one that I landed. And we'll just make that a base. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the one I landed earlier. And then BigCom 1 is um, the one that we just sent up. And we'll recover Jebediah and his ship. GPS 2 is still on a very strange orbit, and we need to fix that. So, if you remember in the last video, there were two places I was circling um, that needed satellite coverage still in order for me to feel completely satisfied. Um, the one we have filled with BigCom1, um, I really need to rename that, I'm not sure if I have yet. Um, and the other I will fix with GPS 2 now that it's working. So we're going to bring our orbital period down to about three hours, but first it's going to flip around because the weight is not distributed evenly. Um, so yes, we'll lower our orbital period to three hours. Everything else is on six because we want to get to the exact opposite side of where we are now. Because um, I believe we're lined up with one of the satellites. But yes, so here we are. Um, this is after we've gotten back to Apoapsis. Um, we are now just raising our orbital period to six hours so that we stay here in this location relative to everything else. And I'm apparently, yes, uh, focusing on the wrong things. You can focus on different things in map view with tab and then you can use the backspace key in order to go back to the ship that is currently selected. So that's sometimes useful. You can actually tab to maneuver nodes so that you can see things from the point of view of a maneuver node. Ooh, I'm sorry, I just hit the uh, microphone with my finger. Um, sorry about that, that might have been really loud. But yeah, so now we are just slowly, since I can't put this thing on full throttle or it'll flip around again, we're slowly raising our periapsis back up to approximately geosynchronous so that our orbital period is six hours, which I've said like four times now. And as you can see, our uh, we have quite a bit of eccentricity, um, which I thought about keeping because it would be nice to have a little bit, but 
No, we will level this out by using the normal, um, by pointing in the normal direction. Normal means um, perpendicular to the plane, so the plane would be the equatorial plane, and we want normal, so we point north, or south. South is anti-normal. Um, yes, we point normal, point prograde again after doing that burn, and now we are 558, just a little bit more, 628. I think I had the other ones at like 626, 627, so this is pretty good. And um, as you can see, we've we've got everything good. And uh, then this happens. Yes, as you can see, everything is just completely messed up. This actually happened to me like 12 times during this episode, and it was really annoying. So the only thing we can do here is exit. So that's, that's pretty much the end of the episode. So thank you all for watching. See you all next time.